Now to our debates. The Metropolitan Police has announced it will stop attending mental health calls unless there is an immediate threat to life. Yes, the Commissioner of Britain's largest police force says the move is an attempt to free up resources, with officers often being diverted from fighting crime. But the President of the Royal College of Psychiatrists says there's now not enough time to put a new system in place. But is it up to the police to respond to the mental health incidents or not? Well, joining us now is, is Ivana Poku, a postnatal depression survivor, and she says this change will add to the stigma around mental health and it's up to the police to respond. Well, meanwhile, UK policing expert and former police officer Oliver Lawrence says this new policy will save lives. So good morning to both of you. Really, really good uh, to have you with us. Ivana, let's start with you, shall we? Why do you think that police should be able to handle mental health crises and, and mental health situations? So as someone who survived postnatal depression and knows and understands how it feels to be in that position where you feel that, you know, something is not right, something can happen. It's very, it's amazing to have that option, you know, because when you're really struggling, you don't have often the time to think who should I call or what should I do and the number 999 it's somehow it's engraved in our brains and when we call the police we have the reason for that yeah and sometimes you you don't even know when the situation is severe that you know it's life-threatening Some, sometimes it's just hard to say um, even for like loved ones who are with you in the in the situation they sometimes they can't estimate like how severe the situation is so often there is not enough time to think oh is this a mental health issue is it not is it life threatening is it not you just need to you know do something you need to act and um you know like i said like there is a reason why people call police in mm. in particular so, okay and Let's... even if they feel they don't have they don't help they do help OK, let's um, put this to Oliver Lawrence now. Oliver, um, data out yesterday, uh, there are 27,000 calls per year to the Metropolitan Police alone <coughs> for mental health issues. And at the same time, data released yesterday, 30,000 unsolved muggings, only 6% of burglaries solved. Is the police service a police service or is it now morphing into a social service? Yeah, it's an incredibly important announcement yesterday by Smart Rally, an incredibly bold decision and one that I, I'm in favour of and I think a lot of the general public will be. You know, mental health issues are very complex in their nature and policing is, in its very essence isn't really trained or equipped to deal with the complexities of mental health issues, mm. albeit they are there for the life-threatening matters and to deal with those and to bring those incidents back to sort of a, a normal arena for people to be able to deal with in a, in a mental health and care facility. But ultimately, policing's ultimate aim here is to fight crime mm. and to support public. And that's what, our, that's what we expect of our police, is to be able to respond to those incidents of crime and not spend hours and hours inside hospitals looking after people when they could be on the streets fighting crime. Mm -hmm. Well, Ivana, let's put that to you. Wouldn't you Rather, if you were calling the police in a mental health crisis, wouldn't you actually rather be with someone who is equipped, who is trained? Wouldn't you rather be on the phone to someone from the health service? Uh, on the one hand, yes, I agree. But like you said in the beginning, there is not enough time or the we are not prepared to, you know, be there yet where, you know, we can be confident to call and know who to call and trust that we will be handled. So I think... It's, it's the matter of time if we need more time to prepare for this because when we, we when the police be drones completely then it's extremely dangerous i think and it can cause more harm than good yeah oliver putting that back to you um the the royal college of psychiatrists are saying the problem is um putting a new a new um uh, position in place where the police aren't required will take until at least September if they started today and the funding, the allocation isn't there. I know from some of the work I've done in the past with desperate fathers who've deliberately tried to get themselves sectioned by committing a crime because they can't get the mental health help they need. However, should it fall upon the police to step in or is this a case of the government and ministers just not funding mental health where it's required to allow the police to police? 
I, I think this is a discussion that we've been having for many years now, you know, the lack of investment in social care services and mental health services. Policing has tragically been a Band-Aid fix for a lot of these issues over many, many years because, you know, we're there in numbers, we're able to support in, in, a, in a variety of different settings. But equally, fundamentally, a decision... There's no good time for this. And by putting and applying this pressure and giving a date allows other government departments to plan and put things in place to be able to support people mm. with really challenging issues which police aren't capable, aren't able to deal with in, the, in, in, in sort of the depths that people really need and expect to, to be supported. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ivana, that will be your concern, won't it? I mean, you talk about your own uh, battle with postnatal depression and, and often when you have those very, very dark thoughts, time is of the essence, isn't it? So your concern would be that if mental health providers aren't funded well enough, they might not be able to respond at the speed at which is required. Exactly, absolutely, yeah. So at the moment, even when the police says we can't help the people, you know, we, we don't, uh, we can't give adequate support. I don't agree with that because sometimes the people just need to know they have someone, you know, to call and to, you know, uh, speak to so that sometimes that's all they need. And, so maybe um, it's another attitude as well. Sorry. Be your point. Um, Oliver, putting this to you, so you're, you're a former copper. Um, so you've seen the role of the police officer change immensely mm. um, from one of enforcing crime to now acting as a de facto social service, not just in mental health, but also missing persons. What's the attitude of police towards this? Because they're often criticised for spending too much time behind desks, not solving muggings, not solving robberies. Are the police just wanting to get back to basics and be bobbies on the beat again? Uh, I think the, mo the most important point is police officers are very caring individuals. And they will never walk past somebody who's clearly in distress and needs their support. Fundamentally, that's, that's, that, that's the makeup of a police officer, really supporting. But equally, they join because they want to make a difference. They join because they do want to find bad people wanting to do us harm, committing crime. And in essence, as a public, that's what we expect of them. We don't expect our police officers to be sitting in hospitals for hours upon hours, whilst outside there are people dialing 999, wanting to speak to police because they've become the victim of a crime. We expect them to respond in a timely manner, investigate offences that people become victims to and ultimately hold those accountable mm. and while spending hours and hours sitting inside hospitals or on cell watches is taking them away from really what we expect of core policing duties. Mm. Whereas Ivana you would say that this is just as important work as fighting crime. Absolutely maybe the solution would be uh, I know it's easier said than done but to maybe changing the structure or you know like the management on the other side of the you know like the police uh, so to speak so maybe the management or to s allocation of the sources and stuff like that i know it's it's not easy of course but this could be a way forward mm -hmm. okay ivana poku and oliver lawrence an excellent debate i think we covered all topics off there thank you for joining us this morning much appreciated